multiplication by 4. So we can define aliasing as an effect which causes different signals to become uh, indistinguishable when they are sampled. Um, and the analog signals reconstructed from the aliased uh, discrete time signals are distorted or different from the original analog signals. We have seen this example that originally we had a signal of 50 Hertz. We sampled it with a 40 Hertz sampling rate and uh, it came down to FD as 1 by 4. And if we go back and try to reconstruct the original signal, then we will not be getting back the 50 Hertz signal. Rather, we will get back the 10 Hertz signal because the aliasing has occurred. Uh, the reason was that we have not followed the Nyquist criteria. This um, figure, this is figure from your book. It um, explains uh, why the signals of two different frequencies happen to generate same numbers. Uh, so here in the bold uh, black, there are two signals. This uh, signal, which is of lower frequency, is 1 upon 8 hertz, F2. And this signal, which is of a higher frequency with more rate of oscillation, is F1 as minus 7 by 8 hertz. Now these are two different signals in continuous time. Let's say we want to sample both of these signals with a sampling frequency of 1 hertz. 1 hertz means uh, one sample per second. That is, the first sample will be taken at a 0. The second sample will be taken at a 1, 1 second. The second will be at 2 second, the third sec 3 second, 4 second, 5 second, and so on. Now, let's look at where uh, these samples are taken. So the first sample is taken at zero. So both of the signals, one upon eight hertz and minus seven by eight hertz, both are at the same point. So the same identical value will be recorded. Then at one, one second, again the signal, uh, one by eight and minus seven by eight, both are intersecting each other. So when the sample will be taken at one second, again they will generate the identical value. And this happens at two second as well. You can see this happens at the same um, three second, four second, five second. So now if I remove this solid line and only allow you to look at a solid line of this signal as well as this lower frequency signal and only allow you to look at the sample values uh, and ask you to reconstruct the signal, you will be reconstructing this, this signal and you will never be able to uh, reconstruct this high frequency signal. This is an uh, example of uh, aliasing uh, and this happens when we do not select the sampling frequency as per the Nyquist criteria. Okay, so this is a, a demonstration uh, in an animated format. I will uh, just explain what these blue dots and um, dotted lines are. Uh, so if we look closely, then the dotted lines are the analog signals and the blue dots are um, the sampled signals. So as we, and, and as we go along, you can see the frequency of these dotted lines is increasing. And slowly and gradually as the frequency of these dotted lines are increasing while the sampling frequency remains constant which is represented by the place where the dots of these blue lines are now you can see that the blue dots are making a very different sinusoid than the original signal now this is what happens when the sampling rates are not uh, in line with uh, the Nyquist criteria now there are many videos on YouTube as well and you can go through them. You can replay these uh, videos as well. I'll share the PowerPoint presentations and read the text as well, which will be recommended um, in the end of this video. So this will allow you to better understand 
why and how the aliasing phenomena occurs and how to avoid it. Um, so the sampling theorem, uh, I'll just uh, read what it says. Uh, if the highest frequency present in an analog signal is f max, and the signal is being sampled at a sampling frequency fs greater than twice f max, so that if this condition is followed, then the analog signal can be exactly recovered from its sampled values. But in case fs was incorrectly chosen and it was less than twice f max then once the sampling is done then there is no hope uh, or no way to get your original signal back this is what uh, is meant by the sampling theorem and so in summary what did we learn in this video uh, first of all we now very clearly know uh, uh, the relationship between the frequency of a continuous time signal f which is measured in hertz and the frequency fd which is uh, the frequency of a discrete time signal it is measured in cycles per sample and uh, the relationship of these two f and fd with the sampling frequency fs which is measured in samples per second and we have also looked at the nyquist um, uh, frequency nyquist rate uh, which informs us that what can be the maximum frequency present in the continuous time signal, what uh, can be the minimum sampling frequency if you want to sample the signal correctly. We now know that the range of FD is between minus half and half and what happens if we go beyond this range. Uh, we know that aliasing happens and we know what is aliasing and now we have covered that why it happens and what are the effects. So this is what we have covered in this uh, video. Uh, the readings uh, for this um, video are section 1.4 and subsection 1.4.1 and 1.4.2 of your book Proacus 4th edition and you have to read up to equation number 1.4.20 and there are um, four examples in these sections. Uh, we have covered the first one but uh, there are three more examples and you must uh, do these examples by yourself and uh, read in detail the associated observations which are mentioned in the textbook. So this will help you understand the lecture content very well. So again, best wishes. I'll be uploading uh, the second video um, in a short while as well, which will be lecture four uh, of uh, the course and associated with this uh, video uh, and in that video we will be covering um, the second part of the analog to digital conversion which is called uh, quantization so thank you